num nums. Ooh, ah, my favorite thing starts with a P and ends in an O R N. Porn? Popcorn? You guys want some candy? Nope. Ooh! What is going on everybody? Welcome to Tavern Talk by Initial Reaction. I am Philip, and joining me once again this week, Mr. Keith Garlington. How's it going? Good. How are you doing? Doing fine. Last time uh, Keith was here, we talked about Joker. <laughs> Turned out to be uh, one of your favorite movies of the Indeed. year. It was in my top ten as well. Yeah. Um, but it's January, the end of January, and uh, we're going to talk about another kind of horrific movie. Uh, I guess you could say. This week we are talking about Gretel and Hansel. Uh, you think this one's making your top ten? Uh, there's still a lot of movies to see. <laughs> That's As of fair. right now, That's fair. It's, it's in there. Yeah. As it's of in, right now. How many movies have you seen this year? I think nine. Oh, okay. Nine. <laughs> but this may be number ten. This may be number ten. <laughs> okay. okay. We're getting a little uh, a little bit of, uh, of uh, yeah. what you think there. Right. But, um, Check with me again later, though. <laughs> Yeah, I'm gonna follow up in a couple months and see where it's ranking. Yeah, right. uh, but no, Keith uh, runs a website, KeithInTheMovies.com. Uh, great resource of just you know film articles, reviews, uh, top ten lists, thoughts on upcoming trailers, all kinds of stuff. Um, if you haven't checked out Keith's website, definitely check that out, KeithInTheMovies.com. Um, but no, so we just came out of Gretel and Hansel. Gretel and Hansel. I don't know how. Yeah. Right away. One of those. Whatever, dude. Whatever. Initial reaction, though. What? What, what do you think? What did you think? Um. What well, do you think? Yeah, it's easy. To, um, in this particular movie, I didn't exactly come in with any real expectations. You know, right. January is sort of tis the season for these kind of, uh, especially horror movies. I mean, yeah. you have a lot of these movies that that come out and. Uh, you know, they're pretty low budget. I mean, I, I think this one had like a $5 million budget. I was going to like say. minuscule. Yeah. But most of those are usually forgettable. By the next weekend, I don't remember anything about it. And it's just kind of a dumping ground. Uh, no, it no really disrespect, is, yeah. meaning, but sort of a dumping ground for those kind of movies. Um, this one's interesting because I there's a lot about it that kind of caught me off guard that mm -hmm. I actually liked. Um, yeah. it, it's, it's not a your normal run-of-the-mill horror movie. I think a lot of horror fans will look at this, and at least modern horror fans will kind of look at it and maybe push back at a sort of leisurely pace. Um, it's got a lot of, almost an art house feel to it. it I really mean, you does. could almost see, um, it could almost be like an A24 movie in, in just the way it looks, yeah. the, way it, the way it feels. Um, it's really heavy um, in the mood and atmosphere, which I really like. Mm -hmm. Some of the images were really good. Um, I do feel like it, maybe kind of ran out of steam or and you kind of see it really stretching what little story it has yeah. just to the max that's the thing um, yeah uh, but you know a surprise a nice surprise um, definitely um, a little bit better than I expected I think yeah uh, no I, I don't know what kind of endorsement that is no, but uh, it, I, no put it on the poster yeah, better, than better than I expected better than I expected yeah uh, no I'm no I would say I'm I'm along the same lines as you are I didn't really have any expectation for it. I didn't know a lot about it going in, um, but from the from the get go, from the first frame, and there's like a little prologue of sorts, mm -hmm. and I was just like, "Oh, this is really pretty." Yeah. <laughs> like it's yeah. it's I mean, not pretty in the subjects it's no, filming, or uh, yeah. it's it's very creepy in its aesthetic, but it's 
Uh, it's beautifully shot. It yeah. almost made me want to lean over to you because I know you're uh, a big Malik fan and be like, they're kind of going for that a little bit with the, whatever type of lens they're using. Yeah, yeah, it's really, really heavy into the imagery. But again, that mm -hmm. kind of goes into its main thing, atmosphere and mood. Yeah. I mean, even more than just, just straightforward storytelling, it's all about atmosphere and mood, and I think for the most part they, they get that pretty well. Yeah, well, and you said A24, and uh, it does kind of, I hadn't really thought about that, but it does kind of remind me uh, The Witch in parts. Yeah, you know? exactly. Yeah. Edgar's is The Witch, yeah. Yeah, and um, this was directed, we should mention, it was uh, directed by Oz or Osgood Perkins, who is the son of Anthony right, Perkins, yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, who is obviously he's Norman Bates and Psycho. Um, and so, you know, it feels like horror movies are like mm. maybe in his DNA in a, yeah. in a weird way. Yeah. And I know and, he's made some like a yeah. handful. I don't, I, I can't say I've seen any of his, yeah, of his no, movies, I'm but not. I do know he kind of has his, uh, he's kind of planted in horror, mm -hmm. uh, at least so far. So this isn't a stretch for him. And I think I heard where he actually first appeared in Psycho 2. Oh really? Sort of, yeah, it was a small role, yeah. obviously, but as a kid in Psycho That's 2. That's cool, so. yeah. Uh, but yeah, no, I was, so I was, when I saw that he was directing it, like, I didn't really have any other context besides that, and besides, and this is going to sound real dumb of me, but like, I kind of forgot where the story was going, because I didn't remember, like, the grim fairy tale. Like, yeah, I, yeah. I couldn't remember exactly what happened. I knew there was candy involved, I knew there was a witch, yeah. and the two kids. And that, but what happened once they found each other, I couldn't really remember. Well, this so, is, this is, he, and this is, I guess, I'm not going to get too much into the story, but he um, definitely takes, um, you know, goes in a lot of different and new directions. Okay. This. So it kind of has the basic premise, the basic idea mm -hmm. of the grim, um, you know, the fairy tale. But yeah, I mean, he makes some pretty cool, creative, um, you know, changes yeah. to it. For example, and I think. Correct me if I'm wrong, but Hensel and Gretel were both about the same age, weren't they? Around I 10, feel like they were, yeah. Or something like that. You know, here in this movie, she is the older sister. Right. And he's sort of the um, precocious, you know, young brother who she's kind of the protector of. And they kind of, and, and so it really is more of her story. I was going to say, yeah, and it's so, definitely more her arc that he's yeah, focused yeah. on. And so that's the reason does that. And, you know, several of the things there at the uh, throughout the story. Are, well, that was kind of what I was going to yeah. say, like, I didn't know how close it hewed to the original fairy mm -hmm. tale um, because honestly, I, I, and not to spoil anything, I actually thought it was going to be a little darker in the third act. Yeah. I thought it was going to go to some different places, some darker places, and uh, I don't know if I was necessarily pleasantly surprised by where it went because um, I would have taken you know, an alternate route and probably been like, oh, Good for you, but uh, yeah. but it but like you said, it does lose that steam in stretching this right. fairy tale out into. But it's, and it's only an hour, hour and a half. Yeah, barely. barely. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So. yeah. But it doesn't. I mean, it's not. It's not lighthearted either. I mean, it's, no. it's pretty. It's got some pretty twisted imagery, and I, I was. I kept thinking in the back of my head, this is kind of like a macabre coming of age story. Yeah. You know, I mean, no, because it true. is kind of her <laughs> yeah. coming into her own and. Um, take yeah, that as you will, but but it's, it does. It's got a kind of this sinister, macabre, you know, overtone that's just always with it. Yeah. Now I want to see how you feel about this. There were instances where there's just it's almost like image after image of something that's just weird and twisted. Right. We talked about um, the witch's fingernails. Yeah. Uh, or, or not fingernails, or old fingers. Her whole fingers. Yeah. Um, you know, this room that's down below that she has yeah. in these dreams, and some of. The, I'll be honest with you. I did get. I kind of got caught up in it and thought, yeah, this looks really cool. I did too. But I had no idea what some of it was even getting at. You know, there were some of the things that they would show. Yeah, I was kind of there'd be mentally... an image and I was, that looks cool. I have no idea what, if they're just pasting together images. Right. Or it, if it has any meaning. Yeah. I was kind of mentally taking a note of like each of her dream sequences mm -hmm. and waiting for those images to maybe culminate in something right. more. And they do like, there they is, do. there is imagery that is used uh, you know, for story purposes, there are certainly instances of that, and there are, um, I think, certain metaphors in some of the imagery. But uh, but overall, yeah, I, I was hoping it would kind of come together in a more cohesive way than it did, because uh, it kind of just ended up being, uh, yeah, the setting's real, and this is the setting for you know what the the big uh, climactic moment is. But yeah. um, 
Yeah, no, but the, but it is. It's it looks so good. Like it looks like every single individual shot was like mm -hmm. prepped with real care and just like the lighting of it all. Yeah. The uh, the profile of the the actors, and we should mention um, Sophia Lillis is the is um, Gretel. She's the star of this, and she was in uh, it chapter one and two. Mm -hmm. um, and I mean. There's very limited characters here. I mean, there's maybe four or five actors in the yeah, whole thing, it feels some like. Them, just a couple, just barely. You know, yeah, just yeah. Like barely. Um, there, but. but what did you think about, like, did she carry it well? Was her performance, like, did it get to you in any way? Because, like, I thought she was fine. Like, it was yeah. serviceable, but I wasn't necessarily overly invested in the character. No, I, I wasn't either, but, and she was. She was. She was fine. Yeah. She did exactly what she needed to do. But yeah. But to be honest, so much of what she did was almost, there's, there's a lot of reaction shots. And then yes. there's a lot of these um, just sort of voiceovers where almost like she's narrating to you instead of her actually delivering lines right. direct. But, you know, when she does, she's fine. I think, you know, but it's like you said, there's not a lot there to really just, you know, to go home there's, and tell your wife about. Like, but yeah, maybe it's. I didn't really invest in it because there wasn't a whole lot for her to dig into past, mm -hmm. right. you know, you know, because I, I honestly felt once she got to the witch's house and they kind of established the relationship between the two of them, I thought more would develop mm -hmm. and they'd have uh, more to, um, you know, discover and kind of go back and forth about. But I did want to mention the, uh, the witch, uh, the actress who played her, Alice uh, Krieg. It looks like she was the. Uh, Borg queen in Star Trek. I know nothing about Star uh, Trek. I know exactly who that is. <laughs> I know okay. nothing about Star Trek, but that sounds like a pretty significant uh, yeah, role. Yeah, not too far removed from the witch. Do okay, we okay. I, mean, um, I thought she was great, like, as far as her movements and just, like, bringing a just whole... Her, her tone of voice, the yeah. way she delivered her line. That, I mean, I used the word sinister early. It's all over her. Yeah. I mean, everything. What's, you know, has you, you know, her motives clearly are... Yes. Very question from the yeah, start. Yeah, she personified, and I feel like, everything they wanted her to yes. in her performance. Yes. I thought she was definitely a highlight. Even of it. whether she's saying, whether she's looking, yeah. the way she sort of um, sort of float around in the background and rub her hand across the uh, Hansel's hair. Yes. And just, there's, she's, she's really good. Yeah, I, I like really that. And I thought that um, you mentioned the pace earlier and kind of how it just was slow and um, it just kind of let itself grow uh, naturally mm -hmm. and it didn't it, it didn't feel like it needed to shove jump scares in there or no oh yeah i'm glad you mentioned that's another thing that i've got to commend it for yeah because i mean practically everything you see nowadays i, mean, I, I know you guys did a show on the grudge earlier yeah jump scare jump scare just, oh, just for sure. this lazy kind of um, just sort of the cheapest type of horror mm -hmm. is just jump scare jumps this to my knowledge had one lone scene yeah early on with an axe and a table yeah, um, yeah, that's yeah, that's right. And I don't remember another jump scare yeah. through the entire movie. It I enjoyed, really did hinge on yeah on this mood and atmosphere. I liked the pacing of it. I was I, I did was too. into I did it. Too. Um, like I said, I wanted to be a little more invested in the characters, which maybe would have made me like the mm -hmm. movie a little bit more uh, as a whole. But I I enjoyed it. I was into what it was doing. I really liked the score. I thought it was kind of cool. Yeah, I did too. Um, and it's kind of minimalist, but yeah. But then, then all of a sudden you'll get these sort of bursts of music mm -hmm. that are you know almost. It just kind of makes you a little uncomfortable. Yeah, but it serves a purpose. Yeah, and, and with, um, against the the beautiful imagery that that uh, they've got here, yeah, uh, the color palette, uh, uh, just the use of shadows and and just all of that stuff. Yeah, the cinematography is fantastic. Yeah, it it really does have way more going for it than a January horror mm -hmm. release should. It does. But it has a it has a genuine vision to it. It does. And um, I, I wouldn't necessarily call it scary, but it was chilling like mm -hmm. there I literally got chills at a moment in the movie so uh, it's just one of those that is more chilling in tone and atmosphere like you were saying than it is just flat out scary right. um, Perkins has a good vision he yeah. has a good eye for the camera he has a good eye for these for the, for the images he puts up there mm -hmm. yeah no I definitely uh, definitely agree um, as you know here on Tavern Talk we do out of five stars so for Gretel and Hansel what would be your initial reaction rating um, initial reaction, I think I would give it a three, yeah. um, simply because, um, and I'm still thinking on it, three, three and a half, I'm gonna, yeah. I think I'll stick with a three. Um, again, if there was more story, more to kind of latch onto that way to give it a little more depth, um, 
I think it would probably be a little higher, mm -hmm. but I, I just can't say enough how much I really enjoyed um, just the mood, the tone, the atmosphere, the, the, the camera work, the imagery, all of that. Um, yeah, I mean, I would see it again just for that. Yeah, so, yeah. Uh, I would definitely recommend it. Yeah, no, I, I would, uh, I'm going to go ahead and say three and a half. Like, I, uh, I'll, I'll definitely stew on it a little more, but I really enjoyed it as far as just uh, everything that it had to offer visually. Um, yes, I could have been a little more invested in the story, and maybe that's just because of the familiarity with it. Uh, you know, we've seen this story countless times before, uh, but it's got a fresh enough take and a, and a cool enough eye that I would definitely recommend seeing it on the big screen. And uh, if you're going to see it on a big screen, definitely check it out at a movie tavern. That is where we saw it. Uh, we want to say thank you to the movie tavern. As we do every week, they let us see the movies here and shoot the show afterwards. Um, you know, and if you like what you're hearing so far, be sure to hit the subscribe button below, the little notification bell. We try to upload a new review of the biggest release every week here on Tavern Talk. Um, but other than that, thank you again, Keith. I appreciate yep. you. Thanks for having me. Coming, hanging out, and uh, anytime. Man. Had a good time. Anytime. <laughs> Cheese fries, the loaded fries, by the way, they're really good too. Really good. Yeah. Good job, Baby Tavern. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much. Check out Keith's website, KeithInTheMovies.com, and thank you for checking us out. We'll see you next week. Peace. Favorite thing starts with. Where am I looking at? Like, am I, are yeah. you not there? Huh? Looking at the. You're. That's like, you're not here. On, I'm right? focused on this. You're focused on the popcorn and him. Yeah. Try it. Okay. So distracted. I'm saying it's so bad.